Hi, Stamper fans. Welcome to another Make It Monday. I am Nan Gerlitz, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Bloomington, Illinois. And I am here live on my YouTube channel uh, every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. So thanks so much for joining me. If you're watching the replay, thanks for uh, catching up with me. If you have any questions, you can either drop them in the comments or um, reach out to me and um, I'll make sure to answer them because that's my job. <laughs> um, okay, so tonight we have this fun hippo hippo card. Hippo hippo hooray. Um, so obviously we don't have a stamp that says hippo hippo. So um, I will show you how I altered that very easily. Um, along with some other pointers along the way. So hopefully you'll get some new tips and tricks. Um, I can't find my mouse, sorry, just trying to, there we go. I wanna click onto the comments in case anybody pops on and uh, wants to talk to me, <laughs> I can talk back. All right, so let's go ahead and switch the view and let's get started, shall we? So uh, as always, I have put a link to the um, full supply list with cardstock measurements in the video description, so it should be below. Um, and you can click that and get all the supplies that I've used, all the cardstock measurements, um, everything like that. Um, but I will walk you through that as well right now. So uh, starting off, let's go with stamps. We're gonna use two different stamp sets. Hello, hello, Penny. We're gonna use two different stamp sets tonight. Our Hippest Hippos, which is part of our celebration offering. And I'll be talking a little bit more detail about that in a little bit. Um, but this is a this is a uh, fast favorite, and I'm sure if you follow me on Facebook, you've seen a lot of them. Of them, <laughs> uh, and we're also going to be using the Good Feeling stamp set, which is one of the new ones that came out in our annual catalog this year, and I am completely in love with. One of the reasons I love this so much, I mean, great thank you script. We've got the fun hip hip hooray, but these larger greetings are great when you're in a a rush. You need to make a fun card that has some good impact, but you don't have a lot of time or you just your mojo is just not hanging around. You know, we all go through that where we've lost our mojo. Those big sentiments take up a lot of card space, a lot of real estate. So they're very good for uh, whipping up a quick card and still looking pretty impressive. So, OK, inks tonight. So I will be coloring in our hippos with our stamp and blend so i'm going to be using our tuxedo black memento ink pad which is pretty much my go-to black ink pad and then we'll be using quite a few markery guys <laughs> let's bring those in uh, we will be using four of our stamp and blends so i've got our fresh freesia and granny apple green if you're ever wondering what to pair with green or purple um, they go very well together because they're complementary colors. Yellow is also a really good one to throw in here. So like a Daffodil of Delight would be really good. Those are really great complementary colors, which means it's very pleasing to the eye when you put them together. Um, and then for our hippos, we're actually going to use a combination of our Smoky Slate with uh, the Light Crumb Cake. So... And now you've also seen these little guys. I am using, um, for our greeting, I'm using our 2021-2023 in-color Stampin' Write markers. And I will be talking more about the differences here, but these markers are very different from our blends. And I will, I'm going to go into that as we're using them. So just so you know, there is a difference. They are not interchangeable. Okay. I should have kept that out so I can put these in here and wrangle them. <laughs> okay. So that's all the inks we're using tonight. I know that's quite a bit. Let's get into cardstock. We will be starting with a base of Smoky Slate, which is our standard eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Let's get our bone folder out, give that a good crease. And that is so it lays flat. For the inside, we'll be using a piece of basic white, which is five and a quarter by four inches. For the front, we'll be using soft sea foam, which I have forgotten about for a long time and is now becoming a favorite. 
Uh, this is also five and a quarter by four inches. I've got a piece of granny apple green here that I cut to two and a half by five and a half. That's what we're gonna make our little chevron point out of. And I've kind of pre-done some things for us here. Uh, I've pre-stamped our hippos and colored in a couple of them. So you only have to watch me color one, <laughs> which means I only have to come up with enough uh, filler talking for one hippo. <laughs> Um, and then I've got, oh, I've got a little spider. Don't worry, it was tiny. <laughs> um, and another little piece for our greetings. So basically what I figured is if you have two of these pieces of five and a quarter by four of the basic white, you'll be covered for your inside and outside. All righty. And then I also have some little strips of smoky slate and this basically if you cut one piece that's two and a quarter by one and a quarter and then um i will tell you when we get to those what you're going to cut them down to all righty so that's all of our cardstock i know it's kind of a mishmash right now because i did some pre-cutting we will also be using our baby boss our mini cut and emboss machine uh, because the hippo dies that we're using tonight Da, 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 da. We'll fit um, all of these will work with our mini cut and emboss machine. Anything that works with our mini also works with our full size stamp and cut and emboss machine. So if you are um, a lover of die cutting and you don't have one of these yet and you're trying to decide which, I'm going to tell you if space and budget, neither one of those is an issue, I'd get the full size because then you can use all of our dies and embossing folders and you're not limited. We do have a lot of dies and uh, some embossing folders that do work in the mini. So if space is a problem or if budget is a problem, you will get a lot of um, use out of your mini. I get a lot of use out of my mini. But hey, if you can splurge, do it, get the full size. I have both of them. <laughs> so um, the other die set that we will be using is our basic borders. So we'll be using that to make our fun little chevron piece. And I realize I've been doing this for a long time. So when I sit down to make a card, um, I have a lot of stuff at my disposal. So don't be intimidated by, oh my gosh, I have to have all these supplies. You really don't. So uh, we will also be using dimensionals tonight because usually I use dimensionals. <laughs> it's not a nanner card if it doesn't have dimensionals, right? Um, and I'll be using the trimmer. And I will tell you, I'm not sure if you could see it, uh, in the Facebook post, but there is these little, there you go, raised score lines right on that left edge, because I wanted to give the left edge a little interest too. So you can't see them very well, like from a picture or anything, but if somebody were to get this card, they would certainly notice those little score lines. So I'll show you how to do that as well, using just your trimmer. Okay, I think we are good. Uh, I also want to let you know that all of the products that I'm showing you tonight can be ordered through my online store at stampernan.stampinup.net. But I also want to let you know if you never buy anything from me, I still want to help you boost your confidence and your creativity. So no worries there. Okay, let's get our cardstock out. So uh, usually I dress up the inside of a card, but on this one, I just, I didn't feel like stamping a hippo or anything. So I just put a blank piece inside, which is kind of crazy for me. Um, usually we like to dress up our inside pieces and our envelopes and all sorts of fun things. So you could easily put a little strip of cardstock, one of the greens or something in here to dress it up as well. But that just gives you a nice writing surface so you can say happy birthday or Congratulations, whatever you want to on there. All right, let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do those fun little score lines. And then we can attach that piece as well. When I'm creating, especially when I know what I'm creating, um, you know, I have a sample I'm going from. <laughs> oh, the white inside, I know. Almost blasphemy. <laughs> That's hilarious. I know. I just was really stumped at the end of Friday night when we were done stamping. I'm like, I don't know what to put on here. So I'm just not going to. <laughs> it doesn't happen very often. I will say that. Um, 
Uh, where was I? <laughs> so usually when I'm creating and if I know what I'm creating and I know I don't have to wrap a ribbon around anything or whatever, I like to get as many pieces kind of attached to the base as I can because that clears up my desktop. So some people are messy stampers and they can just have everything out and in front of them and on top of them and they can still stamp. That gives me anxiety. So I just couldn't do that. So I do like to keep a relatively organized chaos going on when I'm uh, creating. So, uh, so what I've done on the edge of this card, um, basically I'm gonna do it over here because it's easier to measure. And then we'll just flip it around. But I have just gone every quarter of an inch. So I started quarter of an inch in and I love our trimmer because it has an inch and a half worth of, worth of markings on the right side of the blades as well as all of those markings on the left side. So being right-handed, I tend to use my trimmer this way so it's easier to line it up on that side. So uh, for these tiny measurements, so a quarter inch over here, I'm gonna take my scoring blade, which is the lighter of the two, and just give it a couple of good scores up and down, and then another quarter inch in, so I'll line it up at the half inch mark. A couple of little zhuzhs back and forth, and then at the three quarter inch mark. And then when we flip it over, you will see, hopefully, let's get that. There we go, the light's hitting it right. So you will see those fun little score lines. Now you could also do it the other way and have them be indented. So it's completely up to you. Lots of fun things. You could turn your cardstock this way and make a cool little cross pattern. All sorts of fun little things you can do with just your trimmer, which you probably have already anyway, if you're making cards. So um, a nice little bonus for you. <laughs> and I often forget about that little um that little tip so i like to pass those on to you all when i remember <laughs> okay so base of our card is done next oh i stamped the hippos look at that i'm so fast <laughs> so let's color in this last hippo and what I've seen a lot of other stampers doing and i kind of like it is they've been adding this crumb cake to their hippos and then overlaying it with the gray tones. So, um, so I'm gonna take the light crumb cake and I'm just gonna go over this whole guy with it. So I will layer gray right on top of this and then I'll leave some of it with just the crumb cake. Now our blends markers are an alcohol-based marker. If any of you are crafters and are not familiar with our blends markers. They're similar to other alcohol-based markers that you might have seen on the market. Uh, one of the things I love most about them is they come in Stampin' Up! colors, so everything coordinates just like everything else Stampin' Up! does. I love that. I love that if I pull crumb cake out, I know it's going to go with my crumb cake cardstock. It's going to go with crumb cake ribbon I might have. It's going to go with, you know, whatever else crumb cake is in the line. If there's crumb cake in some pattern paper that I have, it's going to match. It's not going to be a weird beige that doesn't quite match, but maybe that'll be okay. It's going to go. So I love that about Stampin' Up! And, you know, everything has those same fun little alliterative, alliterative, wow, color names, so you know exactly what you're getting. Okay, so we've got a little flower here, and I've left um, his or her eye also uncolored for right now. Uh, I'm going to take my dark smoky slate and I will say that I noticed when I took pictures of my card for Friday night that um, I went a little crazy with the coloring here uh, like the dark lines seem to be very pronounced. The overshading. Yes. Yes, absolutely. The overshading, and I always I do forget about that as well. So you know, you, you say you want a gray hippo or a gray cow, right? Um, it doesn't have to just be gray. You can shade it with pinks and uh, the the crumb cakes, and you know all sorts of things. So you don't have to just use the light and the dark of the same color. And I often forget about that too. 
until some very talented people remind me. <laughs> and then I'm here to remind you. So I'm going to start with our dark smoky slate and I'm going to do some very quick lines instead of um, kind of overdoing it like I feel like I did on Friday's card a little bit. So I just kind of go in where I think there'll be some shading. So you've got some of the um, little the crooks in his arm there and maybe around his, I don't know, snout muzzle. I'm not sure what you call that on a hippo. Um, so yeah, just those little creases and then under his legs. So we just put a little dark shading right there where you would naturally see some shading on a hippo because we all study that all the time. <laughs> then I'm going to take our light smoky slate and I'm going to go over that. And so when you are trying for the shading, you want to kind of pull from the dark to the light. Now, I will say some people color the light first and then do the dark, and that's absolutely fine too. It's really kind of a matter of personal preference and whatever you find works for you. So if you haven't played around with the blends yet, or if you don't feel like you perfected them yet, get some scrap papers and just, you know, color while you're watching TV or listening to a podcast or whatever. So, but I'm going to pull those dark colors kind of out a little bit, and that'll help blend them. And the mistake that I make when I get a little goofy, which I think happened Friday, is I look at it and go, that's not enough. That's not enough shading. It's, it's not noticeable enough. And so then I go back and I add more. Well, what happens is as these kind of dry, because they are alcohol markers, so they're going to dry over a few minutes, then that shading deepens. You can already see that looks so much better. I like it. So... Those are my little tips for you, and they worked tonight. <laughs> I'm going to grab our dark uh, granny apple green and just go over this stem and that little leaf just to give them some color. And then I'm going to take our, I think I'm going to take the light freesia, fresh freesia, and we're going to color that flower in and also the little eye. I like to use a bright color. So she's got violet eyes. I always wanted violet eyes as a teenager and a 20 year old. <laughs> so, there's a little info you probably didn't need to know, right? I have brown eyes and I love brown eyes. Um, but uh, I always wanted violet eyes for some reason, probably because they were unusual. And I feel like I'm unusual. There you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. So now we need to do our sentiments. Like looking for my stamps, they're right in front of me. So um, as you can see too, if you're not familiar with our stamp sets, they will tell you how many stamps are in it. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. So these must be together, right? So six is how many are in this set. It'll tell you that in the catalog. It'll tell you that online. So you can see exactly what you're getting, what's broken up and what's kind of grouped together. So we're going to use the hip hip. And we're going to use the hooray. Because when I saw the hippos, I thought of the hip hip. I'm like, we have to use that at some point. So, so let's pop that on a block and pop this hooray on a block. And I forgot, we're using one more ink pad. We need our granny apple green. So let me grab it. Sorry about that. I'll add that to the supply list so you all know that that'll be correct. Okay, so the granny apple green is for our hooray. So, and then our hip hip gets the special treatment. We're going to do that in the fresh freesia. But we're going to do that with those Stampin' Right markers. So the difference between the blends and the Stampin' Right markers, you can tell the shape of them, obviously. The Stampin' Blends are like rectangular. The Stampin' Rights are circular. You can tell that. They obviously say what they are right there. They both have brush tip ends and the bullet tip ends. The Stampin' Right markers are great for doing journaling in um, scrapbooks and stuff with those ends. It's also really nice to write inside your cards with matching ink. How fun is that instead of just grabbing a blue or a black pen? But the big difference between them is the Stampin' Blends are an alcohol ink. 
and the stamp and write markers are a water-based ink. So this is basically the same ink that you'll find in our ink pads, which means you can use them directly on our stamps. So I don't want both the hip hip because I need a little bit of room, right? So I'm just going to ink up the one hip. <laughs> that sounds a little silly, like I'm going to ink up my hip. So usually when you do this with the marker, you just want to breathe on it. That kind of reactivates the ink. So I'm going to stamp that one kind of up top there. I'm going to flip it over because I want some room to write the other part and to make sure I have room to um, cut these apart. This is why I love to have little scraps of white when I'm making a card or anything, when I have these little scraps, I have basically a little um, pile of them on my, um, my crafting island. And so I just know if I need to do, that's where these all came from. If I need to do little greetings or something, I can just grab those scraps and they're not wasted. See, Penny, I do like reuse things. <laughs> So all of our stamp and write markers, with the exception of our basic black, you can get that one separately. But other, all the other ones are sold in color families. So this is an in color pack. We also have the newer in color pack, or we have um, packs of 10 by color families, the brights, regals, neutrals, and subtles. <laughs> so a really good deal, a really great way to get a lot of colors all at once. <laughs> hip replacement woohoo this is why we're friends penny <laughs> this is my kind of humor <laughs> all right so now we're also going to take that stamp and write marker i'm going to take that um brush tip and i'm just gonna write in the po at the end of both of these because i love me a pun and now we have a punny card <laughs> all right i'll be here all week as well <laughs> okay so the scissors oh i'm actually just going to do this i think this is not the way i did it originally but that works i need to get a little closer actually so i do remember i originally cut them pretty wide and then i didn't like the way it looked it was too chunky so we need it pretty close to your words on there, okay? okay? My paper poop out of the way. If any of you have been stamping for a long time, I'm sure you'll remember the days of when you would go to stamp class and your demonstrator, that would be me, would have a little like paper bag and she had stamped on it paper poop all over. <laughs> It was always such a funny little joke to me because again, that's my kind of humor. I'm 12, hello. All right, so for the hooray, we're just gonna do some fussy cutting right around this. You do not need to be exact on this, just kind of make some little hills and valleys as you go around your letters. Again, I have given you this tip before if you've followed me, but always move your cardstock, not your scissors. You notice my scissors are staying pretty much the same angle. I'm not wiggling them around. I'm just wiggling the cardstock as I squeeze the scissors. So this is a fun little thing. Again, if you don't have dies or a punch or anything to work with, you just need a pair of scissors and boom, you've got a good impact on a cool little custom cut word. All right. Let's see where we are. We need to die cut our hippo and our green paper, and then we can start some assembly. Oh, and I also wanted to show you guys a difference between the Stampin' Blends markers and the um, Stampin' Write markers. So these are the Stampin' Blends. You saw me color the one hippo with that, the alcohol markers. This is crumb cake and fresh freesia with the Stampin' Write markers. So you can see that crumb cake is a lot darker and so is the freesia. And you can see those little marker lines just like when you were a kid and you'd color with the Crayola markers because water-based markers don't blend. So they just kind of overlap each other. So 
they're not great in my opinion for coloring large areas like this like that big hippo snout sure looks a little messy to me not horrible but a little messy this one obviously very much more blended so that's your kind of difference between them. Now, for coloring in like a little flower like this, it would be no problem to use those Stampin' Write markers as well. Or if you had things with more details, if you had some little flowers and things, it would be absolutely great to color those in. Or you could, again, color direct on your stamp with them to get some color that way. So everything kind of has its purpose, doesn't it? Okay, now let's get our Granny Apple Green out. We'll get our little hippo bippo and the baby boss. So this is our mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. I love that it's nice and compact like that. You'll notice I've got some little pieces of washi tape. When you get your stamp and cut and emboss machine, it comes with all of these plates. So you're all ready to go. If you're familiar with die cutting, you know that there's what we like to call a sandwich. So like you're, like the cardstock you're die cutting is kind of the meat of the sandwich and here's your pieces of bread and so forth. But the nice part is you don't have to remember anything. It says, hey, die cutting, here's what you do. You use a number one and two number twos and everything is labeled for you. I love that about our system. It's so much easier to remember what to do. If you're using an embossing folder, then you're gonna need this plate and I have two plates for embossing folders. This is probably for a 3D, I bet. Yep, use with 3D embossing folders. Use with standard embossing folders because our 3D embossing folders are thicker, so you need a thinner plate to go with it. And all you're trying to do is get the thickness right to go through that slot. <laughs> all right, so we are going to use that standard little white plate, the number one. We're going to use a clear plate, the number two. I'm going to put our hippo there. Find my dies. <laughs> and this is this hippo. So, another fun thing about these hippo dies these are a free offering during celebration. The hippo stamp set is also a free offering during celebration. Love it. Um, and look at all these fun accessories you get. You get a boat, you get a little tub, you've got some sunglasses or a mask and snorkel, even a little life preserver. Lots of fun things. And I'll be featuring the hippos all this week on my Facebook page, which you can find here. <laughs> Penny, I understand those marts tell the world how bad I am at coloring too, which is of course why I prefer the Stampin' Blends because they're very forgiving in that way. Um, yeah, so I just put my hippos dies down and I forgot to get, okay, so, so this little hippo guy, so we have all three of the hippos have coordinating dies. And this is why I have little pieces of washi tape that just kind of live on my embossing machine. I just tack down a little corner and that'll keep that in place. Ah. <laughs> and there we go. Perfectly die cut. I love that. We didn't have to do any of that fussy cutting with the scissors. Before we had die cut machines, I swear I wouldn't buy any stamps that didn't have a coordinating punch because I didn't like to fussy cut. Now I don't mind fussy cutting, so it doesn't bother me as much. But um, it's certainly easier and quicker if you're working with dies or a punch. So for this little chevron guy, I'm again just going to tack down one end of this. It doesn't really matter, you know, how how this goes on here because I'm going to make two die cuts and that's what's going to, whoa. All right. So I will tell you these long skinny guys tend to bend a little bit when they go through the die cut machine, just gently nudge them back into place. All righty. The other thing you want to remember with your mini cut and boss machine is don't line these clear plates up exactly the same. You want to offset them just a little bit and they go through your machine much easier. So if you have this mini and you're having any difficulty getting that through, 
make sure that you're offsetting those clear plates a little bit and that might be the problem. Okay, so we've got our first cut. And now I'm just gonna line that up eh, right around there. I'm not like making any, you know, it has to be a half an inch, whatever. It just needs to be relatively straight, and kind of the same on both sides. <laughs> All right, and pop that through again. So this is a fun little die cut that you could just make a bunch of chevrons. So if you wanted to, if you're scrapbooking some cheerleading things and like they have chevrons on their uniform, that would be fun. If you are um, making something that, you know, you kind of want to point to something to highlight it, you could make some little arrows like that, um, highlighting something. So that's fun. And in this case, that's exactly what happened is I was making this card and I, I didn't have that little pointy piece in there at first and it just didn't look finished. And so now with this, I feel like it guides the person right through the card. I really like that. So a fun little addition. And as I say, I have a lot of supplies at my fingertips so I can make those fun little additions. Okay, so now we have our card base. I am just going to lay this guy down to give me an idea of where he needs to be. I did uh, purposefully put the hippos where they were because I felt like this guy was going this way and she's definitely going that way. And this guy's kind of neutral, so he could just hang out up here. <laughs> then we need our little smoky slate pieces. I seem to have misplaced one. Ooh, there it is. Thank goodness it didn't fall between my desk and the floor. So I told you before that we cut this big piece at like two and a quarter by one and a quarter. So it's two and a quarter this way. Okay. And then I just cut a piece off that was one inch wide which left me with another half an inch. So I just cut those in half. So we've got little two little one quarter inch ones. When I did this on Friday, when I was just making it up as I went along, I just cut them kind of sort of. So if you're just cutting them kind of sort of, it's just fine. <laughs> I just wanted a fatter one and a couple of skinnier ones. <laughs> So um, let's go ahead and grab our liquid glue because this is a thinner little piece, this hooray guy. I'm just going to put a little bit back there. And we will put this to the right side of our little, our fat smoky slate piece. And then that can actually get put down on our card base. So we have our hippos kind of just sitting around kind of for space um, placement. So this one's gonna go all the way to the outside edge. So it's gonna overlap that first layer of sea foam. And then I'm gonna take our two hippos, our words. <laughs> We're again gonna do the uh, liquid glue. We're just gonna put one skinny line right down the middle. And that is gonna be how we attach our little smoky slate pieces. Okay. So usually I put my adhesive on the smaller piece, but because these are gonna be sticking out, and I'm actually gonna pull that off for a minute. I want this to be shorter. Because these are going to be sticking out, I wasn't sure where to stop with the adhesive. So I didn't want there to be too much adhesive on there. Okay. So we can go ahead, let's put down our little chevron piece here. And you can do that with liquid glue or with the um, stamp and seal. Either one will work because it's pretty thick. If you've cut it a lot thinner, then you might want to stick with the liquid glue because the stamp and seal might get messy 
And this one also is going to go top to bottom. I cut it at five and a half inches long. So it would also go off and go all the way to the edge of the card. All righty. All the hippos get dimensionals on the back. So remember my little saying, dimensionals are cheap and I'm not. <laughs> they're literally pennies. So I'm going to use three on each hippo so that they're not wonky at all. Couple down one side, one down the other. And a little prima ballerina. I know these hippos have been a crowd favorite on the Facebook page. I know um, lots of people have loved them. I will be featuring them all week this week on Facebook. So if you want to see more ideas with them, tune in over there. I am Stamper Nan pretty much everywhere on the interwebs. So <laughs> if you're looking for me someplace, you can probably find me by searching that. So and another little design element is how I've kind of overlapped those two hippos onto the chevron piece. And I am just now realizing that I actually used parakeet party on this page, on this one, not the granny apple. I'm noticing, I'm like, why does it look so much darker? Because it's a different color. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put another skinny line of that liquid adhesive on here. Again, I'm gonna overlap onto that chevron just a little bit. It kind of anchors it. So thanks, Penny. I really liked it too. I was pretty proud of myself for the little hippo hippos. <laughs> and there we go. So you can see, obviously, two different color greens. So that's fun to see the difference there. But then you can also see the difference in coloring those hippos. So I was very much heavy handed with the dark smoky slate on the first one I did. And then on tonight's, I was much lighter, but you can still see that shading around his legs and arms and his snout. So much, much better there. I did want to let you guys know, because I told you I would tell you about the celebration. So celebration now happens twice a year, which I'm so excited because two times the fun, it's the best thing ever. And it goes through the entire month of July, all the way to the end of August, but it is only while supplies last, all of these um, items. And the way celebration works is um, there's three ways you can participate. You can shop with me and for each $50 or $100 you spend, you get to pick out a freebie from our celebration offerings. So the Hippo stamp set is free with a $50 order. The die set is free with a $50 order. So you can buy the rest of your supplies. You can buy a nice greeting set maybe, um, some card stock, you can get your adhesive, all that kind of stuff squared away. And then you've got free um, die sets and, and stamp sets to choose from. We also have designer papers that we have for $50 orders. These um, cardstock and envelope cards and envelopes are sold out already. So, boo. So, don't wait because other things might sell out and you don't want that to happen. Got a cute little sketchy, um, uh, sketch like, I shouldn't say sketchy, <laughs> uh, stamp set that's free with a $50 order. Some um, silver and gold designer papers that I did feature on my Facebook page last week. I did some fun designs with those. Those are also free with a $50 order. And then we have some um, bumped up prizes for $100 orders. So with $100, you can get this amazing phrasing um, stamp set, which has 17 different stamps, um, all greetings. So that's a great thing. We also have these tree lot dies, which coordinate with a trees for sale stamp set that's in our mini catalog. So if you buy the stamp set, and some other things, you get up to $100, and then you can get the dies that coordinate with it for free. So that's a nice little bonus. 
And then we also have um, a combo set, which has the wonderful world stamp set and coordinating designer paper. That's also free um, as a combo, as a, as a, a package with a hundred dollar order. The other ways that you can participate in celebration, along with shopping, is you can host. Now, some people get intimidated when you say host. I don't have people over my house. I don't want to clean. Nobody's been in here since COVID. <laughs> I get you. So hosting can mean a few different things. Um, hosting can mean um, we do it online. We can do it on Facebook or we can do it as a Zoom party all those kinds of things. So you don't even have to clean. You don't have to, you don't even have to get out of your PJs if you don't want. Um, hosting can also mean, eh, just send everybody to my website. I'll give you a host code. They can all order stuff. You don't even have to get together on Facebook or Zoom. So just great, gather enough orders and you qualify for things. So our hosts get great freebies already. But then on top of that, during celebration, if you gather either your own order or a group of orders that's $300 or more, you get this free pomegranate set on top of all your other freebies. So that's a fun little bonus. And then there's also always a good join option. And I will tell you, joining the Stampin' Up! team any day of the year is a great value. Um, you pay $99, you get to pick out $125 worth of your choice of products. You get free shipping. Um, and they throw in a free paper pumpkin kit. They throw in business supplies if you want to make it a business. But if you just want to be in it for the discount, you can do that too. No penalties. And during celebration, they will throw in this making plans collection, which includes this beautiful planner which with sticker sheets and all the inserts and everything, three little notebooks, and a great stamp set to go along with it to um, zhuzh up your planner. So if you're a planner gal, Help on my team, message me for more details there. All righty, let us switch views here. There we go, I'm back. <laughs> so celebration runs through the end of August, but as I said, it's while supplies last. Now the join offer goes all the way through the end of August. So I'm sure they'll have enough planners for everybody. Um, if they don't, I'll make it up to you somehow. <laughs> so I would love to have you join my team. I love to have team members. Uh, we have a blast. We have our own little Facebook group that's private for just us. And uh, we recently got together for one of the virtual events Stampin' Up! put on. We do little swaps, all sorts of fun little things. So um, definitely would love to have you come and join us for that. Uh, anything else I needed to say? No? Okay. We're good then. Thanks so much for joining me again tonight. Uh, I will be live here on YouTube again next Monday at 7 p.m. Central. If you found things that you uh, that helped you tonight, if you learned a new tip or anything, I'd love it if you'd subscribe. If you want to click the bell and that way you get notified when I go live or post any new videos, that would be great. And of course, share with your friends. Until next week, happy stamping.